Grab your Bibles and go with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Amen. And as you go there, um, I just want you to hear what God is saying on my, laying on my heart. Um, won't be long at all, just four simple things I want to encourage us to do and to be aware of this morning as we walk through this passage of scripture. Um, bow your heads with me, let us pray, and then we're going to allow God to be God in our midst. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place. We invite your presence here. We thank you for who you are. We want to experience you. We want to encounter you. We want to be all that you would have us to be. So Holy Spirit, as we go to scripture this morning, this is a passage that we are not clear on who the author is. There's speculation that it could potentially be Paul, but we're not sure. But there is still encouragement in it. So open our hearts to hear. Open our hearts to receive, God. Let us be in tune with what you are doing, with what you are saying, so we can be all about you. We want to please you, not only as a ministry, but as individuals. So speak through me to your body this morning. It is in your name we pray and thank you. Amen and amen. So do me a favor. Turn to your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, it's December 4th. Finish strong. Yeah, come on. Turn to your other neighbor. Say, other neighbor. Say, it's December 4th. Finish strong. Yeah. Now, let me tell you, let me tell you all where I'm going. I'm going with this. Um, January 1st, 2016. Um, yes, yeah, 16, 16. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't mess that one up. Yes, yeah, okay. Just, just let me preach, okay? Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just messing with him. Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> he gets it right most of the time. <laughs> you do, you do, yeah, yeah. All, most of the time he gets it right. But here's what happened January 1st, 2016. Um, a lot of you made New Year's resolutions on I'm going to do this, I'm going to be that, I'm going to change, I'm going to whatever your resolution was, you made it. And here we are, December 4th, 2016, and I wonder where are we in our resolutions? You kind of get what I'm saying? And so, I mean, for the majority of us, if you're like the average person, we always say, I'm going to resolve to lose weight, I'm going to resolve to be better, I'm going to resolve to do whatever. And as time goes on, we lose momentum. Come on, say amen. We lose energy. We lose focus. We, we miss what we said we were going to do. We lose all that. And we find ourselves, here's what we do. Well, I'm going to wait since I blew it. I'm going to wait till January 1st, 2017, and I'm going to start over. Come on, y'all. Don't, don't act like it's just me. That's what we do. But I want to I challenge you this, this morning um, don't wait until January 1st, 2017 to start over. Finish what you started strong. Yeah. L let me tell you about me. My, my goal in life, I'm learning more and more. The older I get, the more mature I get. My goal is that my ladder is going to be greater than my past. You know, I was younger, I made mistakes, I did dumb things. And so my goal is that as I mature and continue to mature in life, I want to finish strong. So I'm positioning myself in my latter years to be a lot stronger than I was in my younger years. It's the same thing on the spiritual journey that I was on. Paul puts it this way. When I was a child, I acted like a child. I spoke like a child. I behaved like a child. When I became a man or an adult, I put away childish things. My goal is to finish strong. As a ministry, we have a vision that God has given us. And it's been a few years, and we find ourselves behind the eight ball. We've been talking about this, and you're going to hear about this more and more. But, but we're not going to give up and say, well, next year we'll try it again. I want to challenge us. We're going to finish strong. Finish. Come on, say finish strong. I want you all to hear me say this because I want, to, I want to hopefully motivate you, this Christian journey that we find ourselves on. Here, here is what my life looked like. You can talk about your own life. When I got saved, you needed a fire hydrant when you encountered me. I mean, I was on fire, amen? I would tell the dog, you need to know Jesus. 
I mean, it, it didn't matter who I encountered. I wanted to share my faith, and I would tell everybody about the Lord. I would, I would pray. I was like Daniel three times a day. Y'all know how this works, right? But the longer you stay in the race, can we be honest this morning? We slow down, and we go to bed at night, and we don't pray like we used to. We get up in the morning. Come on, y'all just go ahead and say amen. And we don't pray like we used to. We sit at the table to eat, and the first thing we do is throw the food in our mouth. With, then, oh, did we pray? Well, Lord, bless my food, bro. You know. <laughs> Come on, y'all. I want to refocus us this morning and to admonish and to challenge you this morning to finish strong. Don't give up in the fight. Don't give up in the race. The race we know is not to the swift, nor victory to the strong, but to him who endures to the end. So we got to finish strong. Are you with me? Even in your marriage, even in your marriage, it may look crazy. It may look difficult. It may look challenging right now. But I want to challenge you to finish strong. The text that we have in front of us is a picture, if I can give you a little bit of literary context, of an amphitheater where the games are happening. And what's interesting is, if, if I can paint a picture for you, is that you have this amphitheater back in the Greco-Roman time, and it's a big arena, and there's probably grass on the field, and it's probably all kinds of events going on. I don't know what the specific events were, and I dare not risk trying to say it was like our Olympics today, because it may be and it may not be. But the point is, there was a race, or, or you can visualize games happening within the stadium. Of importance to the picture that I'm painting is who was in the stands. That's the important thing to me because when we look at what's in the stand or who is sitting in the stand, it's a group of cheerleaders that at one point in their time participated in the race that we find ourselves in. And so the author of the book of Romans is writing this text now to encourage the participants in the games or the participant in the race or the Christians back in the days of Hebrew that they ought not give up in the fight, that they can make it because we know our enemy is, is just like a roaring lion going about seeking to devour whoever he will. And those Christians back then were being persecuted. They were going through trials. They were going through tribulation. And somebody needed to encourage them to finish strong, to not give up in the race, to keep running, to keep fighting, to make it to the end. And so this letter is written from a perspective of encouragement to tell them that you can make it. You don't have to end how you started. Even though you might have faded along the way, get back in the game, pick it up, and finish strong. And as a ministry, even as we come to the end of the year, our goal is to not give up in the fight, but to finish strong. So look with me at um, chapter 12 of the book of Hebrews. And I'm going to read, I'm going to read from verse 1 to 2, just two verses. Then next week we're going to pick up with the remaining verses, but I'm going to be moving rapidly through this. Notice what it says. Verse 1 says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Notice what it says. Let us lay aside every weight and sin. And I like the King James because it says, which so easily besets us. This translation says, which clings closely to, set, uh, closely to us. And then it said, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter, or King James says, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Come on, say with me. Say, self, whatever I do, finish strong. One more time, say, finish strong. Now, notice how the text opens up. If we're going to finish strong, one of the first things we need to do, if we can put the first thing on the screen, is it's very important for us to understand where our encouragement comes from, who the cheerleaders are, or who it is that's encouraging us to make it in the race. Now, if you were to back up to chapter 11, chapter 11 contains what I'm going to refer to as the hall of faith. 
okay? Back up to chapter 11 real quick. Let me just um, begin here by sharing something with you. Uh, look at verse 1 of chapter 11 just to share some context. Then we're going to press through this so you can hear what God is saying. Look at verse 1. If you had verse 1, say amen. Verse 1 says, Now faith is the assurance or the substance of things hoped for, the evidence or the conviction of things not seen. And notice what it says in verse 2. For by it the people of old received their commendation. Verse 3 says, By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen was not made of things that were visible. And then the list begins. Verse 4 talks about, by faith, Abel offered uh, a more acceptable sacrifice. Verse 5 says, by faith, Enoch was taken up so that he received um, his reward. Look down at verse 6. Verse 6 says, without faith, it is what? Impossible to please God, for whoever would come to him or draw near to him must believe that he exists and that he does what? rewards those who does what? Seek him. I like to read that again. Verse 6. Look at that. Verse 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please him or to please God, for whoever would draw near to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Okay? Now, let me say this, and I want to read a couple of things, and then we're going to move on in the text. This race that we find ourselves in, or this, this, this ministry, this, this plateau, this journey that we find ourselves on for the, the Holy Spirit, I want to say to you, before we even go into the text, if you stay in the fight, God's got you. Come on, y'all. God's got you. If you stay in the fight, God's got you. And verse 6 says, God rewards those who diligently or faithfully seeks who? Him. Very, very important. So, so I need you to hear me say before we even move into the text that you're not in it for nothing. Oh, come on. Somebody ought to say amen. Because we get discouraged at times, but we're not in this for nothing if we are serving God and we stay faithful and true to him. God is going to diligently reward those who seek him. Now, and notice how the verse continues, right? By faith, Noah, um, being warned of God concerning the event of seeing, he constructed an ark for saving his household, so on and so forth. Look at verse 8. By faith, Abraham obeyed. You kind of get what I'm saying? And it talks about Abraham. Um, look at verse 11. By faith, Sarah received power to conceive even when she was past the age. I like that because it says God is still a miracle work in God if we exercise faith in him. Come on, do I have at least two witnesses in here? I want you to say, okay? Now look at verse 12. It says, therefore, from one man, um, even he was good as dead, was born of the descendants, as many of the stars of heaven, and as many as innumerable of the grains of sin. Now look at verse 13. Some bad news. All those died in faith, having not received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles where? I need to, I, let me read that again because this is going to be, I want to be clear on this. Verse 13, those all died in faith, having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers, strangers and exiles in the earth. Now, I need to say this before I go into the message, so nobody in here is believing God for a car, and believing God for this, and believing God for that, and you end up not getting what you believe God, and you get discouraged. Say resident alien. This world is not your home. Let's get that in perspective, okay? This world is not your home. I want you to hear me. We are just strangers passing through. Notice what the text says. Even though all of these patriarchs of old believe God by faith, the text says they died, heaven not received the reward while on earth, but they never gave up. Better yet, they never got discouraged. Better yet, they never lost, lost sight of the prize, but in the midst of it all, they kept trusting, they kept running, they kept persevering, they kept their eyes focused on the prize, and when they got to the presence of God, 
Amen. I want y'all to hear me this morning. So, 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 so now, with that type of a brief, brief backdrop, and we're going to pick this up uh, next Sunday, look with me at verse 1 of chapter 12. And I need you to know, number one, where the encouragement come from. Notice how it continues now. In light of chapter 11, the list of all the patriarchs of old, Abraham and them, Sarah and them, and Noah and them, and Isaac and them, and Sarah and them, all of those lists of people, here's what the text says. Therefore, since we. Now, I like that pronoun because it's a plural pronoun, and here's what the pronoun was saying. Not therefore, since they, but therefore, since We, yeah, that's important because we includes you. We includes me. Come on, come on, y'all, walk with me. So so the text is trying to get you to understand that these guys have gone on before us. And I thank God that they didn't go on before us and just forgotten about us. They're still in the bleachers. Remember the amphitheater with me. And they're standing there cheering us on. And I don't know about you, but the best cheerleaders are the one who knows how to play the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let let me help y'all with this. The best cheerleader is the person like Abraham who had a Sarah and a Hagar and had marital challenges in his home. And he can stand in the the bleachers and say, it doesn't matter what your marriage look like right now. Finish strong. Somebody in here. The best cheerleader can be a person like Joseph who was tempted by Potiphar's wife, but he persevered and made faithful to God that he can stand on the sand and say, when you're tempted, finish strong. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. So we have cheerleaders that are pressing us on because they themselves have experienced everything that you and I may be going through. And they're saying, if they can make it, so can. So listen to me, church. It doesn't matter what it looks like right now. It doesn't matter why you quit. It doesn't matter why you gave up. It doesn't matter why you're thinking on dropping out the race. I stopped by long enough to say to you, finish strong. Here's how Scripture says it. There is no temptation that is not that has taken you that is not common to man. But God will, with every temptation, make a way out so you don't have to stand up under it. Now, let me tell you why I quoted that scripture. Because somebody in here is feeling, I hear you, preacher, but you don't know what I'm going through. And I want to let you know you're not the only somebody who's going through what you're going through right now. You're not the only somebody who has gone through it. Somebody is in that bleacher. And they're trying to tell you, finish strong. Finish strong. You can make it. You can make it. Come on, tap your neighbor on the shoulder. Say, neighbor. Come on, tell him, tell him, tell him, finish. Tell him, yeah. Yeah, tell him, tell him, tell him. Tell him, finish strong. Yeah, I was, I, I, um, I, I, um, have a table tennis coach. You and Rock do not want to play me. Yeah. And so yesterday I was leaving my table tennis coach, and I was coming home, and I've been craving for a donut. I did. I was in King Supers. Walked by the aisle, and the Spirit of God said to me, finish strong. (laughs) We wrestled for a little bit. And then he says, look at the cloud of witnesses. (laughs) I walked away from the donut aisle saying I could do this. The cloud of witnesses, notice what it says. Seeing we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Okay? And so, so you need to know their encouragement is not coming from people who have not gone through what you and I are, go, have go, are going through. Are you hearing me? Don't, don't fool ourselves into thinking that our present predicament is so contemporized that they could not relate and or identify. Okay? That word witness 
in the text. The New Testament translation translates the word martus or martyrs. Let me tell you what that means. People who have been willing or were willing to give their life for this race that they're fight, they find themselves in. They were going to die trying to get to the end, but nothing was going to stop them. They're going to persevere. When I talk about finishing strong, if we name the name of Christ and we're in this race with him, don't let nothing discourage you. Get to the end with God. So we must know who we're dealing with. Does this make sense, guy? Okay? So it says, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, notice the second thing that the text says. Let us lay aside every what? Weight and every what? Come on, put the second one on the screen. So here's what you got to understand, number two, as we kind of talk to this. To finish strong, you got to remove. Come on, y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Distractions make you procrastinate. Distractions will cause us to do some crazy stuff. And I summarized um, um, weights and sin with the phrase distraction. Notice what it says. Lay aside every weight. Now, now let, me, let me hit this real quick, and I want to make the distinction between the weight and the sin. What weights do is when you are, if you're an athlete or you are a baseball player, you will notice that the baseball player, will, when he's practicing his swings, and sometimes he's just doing air batting, he has a weight on his bat. Are you with me? And the purpose of the weight is to kind of give him strength as he's swinging the bat. But the moment he gets in the race, in the game, he doesn't go into the batter's cage with the weight on the bat. He takes the weight off so he can speed up his swing. Are you with me? The problem with me and the problem with you is that we get in the game, but we want to keep the weight. We want to keep the weight on the bat. Come on, y'all. And we wonder why. Can I, can I talk this morning? Why we can't swing, why we can't, we won't ever hit the ball, why we are striking out every time is because we have too much weight holding us down. I mean, it's no different than the runner that's running track. You will find that the sprinter, be it be it 100 meter or 400 meter, or two, when they're training, they have weights on their leg, and, and they're running because they want to strengthen their muscles. But the moment they get in the race, they take the weight off. Listen at me. Get rid of the things that are weighing you down. Take off the weight. Take, and, 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 and what I like about the text, because I'm going to stay true to the text, just like the author, he doesn't name a specific weight. He just calls it weight. Because here's what I want you to understand. You know what your thing is, and I know what my thing is. Get rid of it if it's slowing us down in the race because it is nothing but a distraction. Are you hearing me? Now look at the next thing. Not only do you get rid of weight, but it says get rid of the sin. Sins will mess you up while you're playing the game. Weights will stop you from getting in the game. Sin will mess you up in the game. Don't you find it that the only time sin is recognized as sin is when you give your heart to Christ? When you're a sinner, there's no such thing as sin because you're a sinner. <laughs> and sinners, you said this a few weeks ago, Jomo, sinners... But, but Christians are not supposed to sin like sinners, right? So, so, so here's what the text says. If we name the name of Christ and we're going to continue in this way, race, we, need, we must get rid of all the distractions, be them weight or be them sins, because sin will cause, will stop you or hinder us from winning the game. Are you hearing me? Here's what sin looks like. I'm a big basketball fan, and, and, and I, you know, when I go to the game or when I watch games on television, I notice that whenever a person or the opposing team is on the line about to shoot free throws, just right behind that clear fiberglass,
um, um, backboard, there's all these people waving a bunch of stuff. And, yeah, yeah, that's what sin does. It waves things to stop you from making the goal, from winning the prize. And the author is saying, if we're going to finish strong, we must eliminate the sin that's in our life. Notice the cloud of witnesses. Not that they were sinless, nor were they perfect, but when confronted with their sin, notice what they did. Tell your neighbor, and don't get in trouble doing this, but say, neighbor, you better get rid of that sin. <laughs> Eliminate distractions. Understand who is cheering you on? Eliminate distraction, okay? And then notice, notice the next thing. It says, then run with endurance or run with perseverance the race that is set before you. Go to the third thing real quick. Here's the third thing I want you all to do. Number one, know who's encouraging us. Number two, we get rid of distraction. And number three, to finish strong, you've got to make it to the end. Come on, y'all. You, come on, come on, come on. You must make it to the end. Now, now I'm a big Dallas fan, right? And I am, I am fasting and I'm praying that, 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 they, that they finish strong. <laughs> I mean, I want y'all to hear me because it does no good to start. Y'all know how this works. The, the prize is not given to who was 11 and 1. The prize is given to who wins yeah, and the problem with me and the problem with you is because we've been in the race a little while and we made it to 11 to 1, we become complacent. Come on, come on. We become comfortable. We think we've got it all together, but being 11 and 1 don't mean nothing if you don't make it to the end. You've got to persevere to the end. Here's what Paul says. I must persevere to the end lest I myself be considered a castaway. It doesn't matter how saved you are right now. It's how saved will you be in the end. It doesn't matter how holy you are right now. It's how holy will we be in the end. To finish strong, you've got to make it to the end. Encourage somebody this morning, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. It doesn't matter what your goal is. It doesn't matter what it looks like right now. You might have feel like you want to quit. You might have given up. Whatever it is, get back in the game and finish strong. Come on, say persevere to the end. Say it again. Say persevere to the end. One more time. Say persevere to the end. Very, very important. Very, very important. Very, very important. Now look at the last thing. Look at the last thing I want y'all to see in the text. I told you I'm going to be very, very simple because I got some heavy stuff I want to share next week. Look at the last thing, okay? Looking to Jesus. <laughs> I can stop right there. <laughs> Looking to who? And what is he? Yeah, yeah, I like King James on this one. What is King James? Anybody got King James in front of him? Oh, yeah, that, that sounds a little more spiritual right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like wearing cowboy boots, and I like preaching in cowboy boots. It's my new thing. I've been doing that. My wife walked into my office this morning, and she had boots on. So I'm like, baby, you trying to be like me? You know. <laughs> no, we just joke with that. I said that to say this, don't look at me. I'm in my own race. Are you hearing me? Don't, 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 don't look at me. I'm working on a series in subliminally that talks about human like me. Paul kind of says that. The problem with a lot of us as believers in Christ we look too much to the men and women of God and we idolize them and place them in places where they ought not be. And the reason we drop out of the race is because the person we set up at Christ failed us and because they failed us, we find ourselves no longer in the race. If you're going to finish strong and persevere to the end, set your eyes on the right prize and don't look at no human because they're going to fail us. The problem with our country right now is a lot of us had our eyes on the wrong person. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. And then November 8th came along, and that person switched, and we're panicking because we're placing the country in the hands of a person, and we don't know what to do. Don't look at humans. Keep your eyes on the prize. Are you hearing me this morning? I want to be clear. I want to be clear. I want to be clear. Fight the right fight. Fight the right fight. For those of us that know Christ, it's not a, a political fight. It's not a, a physical fight. It's a spiritual fight. Because the word says our wrestle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual rulers in high places. And the way we engage and the way we stay focused and the way we finish strong is by putting on the whole armor of God. And when we've done all the stand, we stand because our eyes eyes are on the right place. Are you hearing me? Put the fourth thing on the screen. I want you all to see this. Very, very important. To finish strong, people, you got to focus on the prize. And the best prize there is looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. This is the reason I can't throw verse 3 in there because there's too much meat in verse 3. And I need to take time to really, really flesh that out. Notice what it says. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher or the founder in the ESV and the perfecter of our faith. Now notice what it says. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising his shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Listen to me carefully as we look at this text. If you can keep your eyes on Christ, there's nothing anybody can say to you that will prevent you from finishing strong. There is nothing they can do to you that will prevent you from finishing strong. There's nothing they can say about you that will prevent you from finishing strong. He went to that cruel cross where that pierced him in the side. They scandalized him. They called him all kinds of names. Come on. They beat him with a cat of nine tails. They nailed him on a cross. They put nails in his hand and they put nails in his feet. He could have called 10,000 angels. He could have come down on the cross, but he did not come down because he kept his eyes on the prize. And the prize was me being saved. It was you being saved. Wretches like us going to a relationship, so he endured the shame for us. Are you hearing me? He went through it for us. He went through it for us. He started it, and he made it all the way to the end, the beginning and the end. Here's us. The moment somebody talks about us, I'm done. Can't endure nothing. And the reason you're done so quick, truth be told, your eyes are not on the prize. You were looking at that person and you weren't looking at God. Are you hearing me, guys? I want to say as a church, we're going to make it. We're going to finish strong. As a believer, you ought to make it. You ought to finish strong. There's ministry giftings that God has deposited in a lot of you in here. There's ministry callings that God has placed on you. And a whole lot of us have been wounded in the past by church, by whatever the situation is. And now you've come here as a place of refuge, a place to rest. And here's what you're doing. Ain't nobody going to ever hurt me like that no more. And you've dropped out of the race. Finish strong. I like my little graphic. Dude on his knees. Dude getting up. Gun sound. He starts running. And he keeps pressing till he crosses that finish line. The prize is not given to quitters. The prize is not given to those who abort God's process. The prize is not given to those who give up on life. I want to encourage you this morning. Seeing we are in, surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. 
Number one, the people who are cheering us on and encouraging us are people who have been where we have been. Are you hearing me? So we need to eliminate all distractions, number two. Get rid of all the distraction. Are you hearing me? Persevere to the end, number three. Don't give up. Know you've got to keep fighting regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what it feels like, regardless of what it sounds like, and you keep your eyes on the prize. Keep focus on the prize. Are you hearing me? Finish strong. Next week, I'm going to give you some examples in verse 3 of considered him for those that are saying, I hear you, preacher, but you're not feeling what I'm feeling. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I've went through, what's happening in my life. Verse 3 says, consider him. <laughs> ah, We'll look at that next week. I'll give you an example of you hadn't gone through what he went through. And if he can make it, I can make it. You can make it. We can do it. Are you hearing me? Let's finish strong. Bow your heads with me. Holy Spirit, you're a wonderful Father. You are a mighty God. You are a gracious God. You are a phenomenal God. Seeing we are surrounded with such a great cloud of witness, God, let us lay aside all the weights and sin. That doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before you, us. Looking to Jesus, God, author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was before him endured the cross despising its shame. Right now, God, I want to pause and pray for a marriage that's thinking about giving up. They would finish strong. A person, God, that might be going through a difficulty or challenge in life, be it educational or thinking on dropping out of school, they would finish strong. A person that started a business but gave up on the business, and you did not say it was time to give up, that they would finish strong. Others in here, God, that there's a ministry call on their life. They don't know what to do about that. That Holy Spirit, that you would speak to them and they would finish strong. Because the race is not to the swift nor to the strong, but endurance, perseverance to the end. So I'm going to speak in faith, God, and thank you for all the leaders that are in this room. The people that are going to say no more. And they're going to come against the enemy and they say, I, he, won't, he won't win I'm going to give this to you. So we thank you for you. We thank you for what you're doing, how you're moving in our midst. We give our hearts to you, God. Move mightily in this place. In your name we pray and thank you. Amen.